I. It's not dinnerables. It's lunchables. He's he's operating on Hawaii time. It's still lunchtime there. I don't know uh, if anybody's gonna watch this, so let's just do the uh, intro. Push. You know what I love about our video intro is that it's so dated that I find it retro cool now. <laughs> if you wait long enough. Yeah, it's it back in fashion because the HPI cars in there and uh, Jeff Triple X main stuff that's uh, fashionable. That's like a cav that's a poor man's caviar sandwich. That looks delicious and huge in that perspective. <laughs> yeah, what's going on here? Um, Cheers, gentlemen. Long time no see. Good to see you all again. Yeah. It's been so long, I don't even know if the backgrounds work. Why are these so... I don't know what happened here. You probably got to scroll or shift. Yeah. I'll do it that way. Um, I didn't realize that I had a background thing, but that also means everything's in the background, I'm assuming. So I'm smart now. Uh, RC Babble. That's all I have to say, because we haven't been here in quite a while. Shit happens, life happens. You got three different people, three different places, three different lives. So for us to get together, it's like a reunion, Delta variant party. Uh, not much going on in my background. We're discussing Pete's ever changing uh, background. He's fixed this, but he does have somewhat tall people in the background staring at you. I was impressed that your RC truck is plugged in and your lights are on. Mine? Yeah. Set that. Well, I got home a little early, so I had a little time to plug something in, and it was behind me, and I was like, oh, I shouldn't leave it with the body off. Have you, have you messed around with the lights uh, controlled by the app yet? No, I didn't know they were controlled by the app. That's pretty fun, yeah. Yeah, I was trying to control it with the mode to have it uh, flash in the background, but I, I, the mode button didn't work for me. But as I said in uh, yeah, my video is, I, <laughs> I tried to hold it, and my video is, it was set on demo and I couldn't figure out how to get out. And then I pushed the button. So if it's on the app, I will put it on there because that's fun. Uh, once I take it out for the ride. Um, nothing else in the RC world. Oh, I got I, one thing. I, I, I actually did a photo shoot. Here's my picture. It's pretty. Look at it. It's fun. <laughs> Very nice. Got the retro uh, Masami body complete with Yokomo stickers. Look at it. It's fun, he says. Yeah. Cool picture. It is fun. Patented uh, technique by me. Uh, there's a few things we're going to talk about today. The show topic is it never has a topic. It's just babble. That's why it's named that. Um, if you're new, we have a magazine. I have a hat. Um, you can buy the hat. You can also buy the magazine. The hat comes with the magazine. Yeah. Or the magazine comes with the hat. Whichever way you want to look at it. If you buy the hat. And a limited quantity because I don't have that many. And it's back issues. So you get 41 or two or something, whatever it is. Um, other than that, uh, RC news in, in, in our lives. Uh, Charlie has been traveling. I got to go to events. I got to go to Indiana for Axial Fest. And I got to go to California for Axial Fest. Well, I traveled through California for Axial Fest more accurately. And how, how's uh, scalar life, camping life? Um, Indiana was rough. It rained a lot. So the camping wasn't that awesome in Indiana, even though it was a campground, you know what I mean? But everybody, there's a bunch of people in tents. And if they weren't in tents, like you're kind of chilling in your motor home when it's raining. So some of that was a little wrecked, but during the daytime, people were going out on trail, like in ponchos with umbrellas and bags over the radios crawling all day. Like they were there to go crawling. They weren't going to let the weather stop them. So that, that part was very impressive. I did not do that. I, I stayed under the canopy the whole time. So it's raining and people were in tents or they were in tents. Both. They were <laughs> in tents in their tents. Yeah. And in ponchos. Both. Yeah. The, and, well, and, if, you ever, if you ever find yourself inside poncho, you've had too much to drink. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, and then uh, Axial Fest in California, there wasn't the traditional camping. The uh, Donner doesn't have a campground, but they have a parking area. But because of 
whatever nonsense, they didn't allow camping in the, the parking lot this year. So there was a lot less folks kind of like doing overnighters. But uh, Truckee and Tahoe are only 20, 30 minutes away. So people just went instead of camping, they uh, stayed in hotels, which I thought was refreshingly as far as like how much better everyone smelled this year. I'm just kidding. But I camped in the parking lot because the vendors got to have um, like a parking lot campsite. So me and Casey Dill and his family, they brought their big, huge trailer out. So we had like a headquarters to hang out and we did uh, Hobby Wing booth games. So we had like a shooting gallery. You could shoot the Nerf gun for prizes. And that broke out into Nerf war throughout the vendor area, which was, of course, very fun. Any good prizes? How important is camping to the typical Axial Fest goer? Like, would they, would they be bummed out if, like, you know, at, at this Axial Fest, you just go to your hotel at night when it's time to sleep? Um, or- yeah, no, it kind of wrecks the whole thing. Like, the the whole, uh, for most of the folks in California, the, the, that was their camping trip that they did. They got their RCs and they went camping for a week right. and kind of got after it. I Most of the locals from my area, you know, we're two, three hours away from uh, Donner. They didn't even try to go. They, a lot of them stayed home. There's a handful of them that still went because they love scaling more than camping. But, you know, most of the folks, they like the camping aspect of it more than anything else. So um, and, it seemed yeah. pretty important. And that was Pro- a venue change thing, right? It's not like Axel Fest wanted to get rid of camping, right? Right. The original place that it used to be at was called Cisco Grow, and that got purchased by some land management place. So I, I don't know the whole story on it, mm-hmm. but it, it, they, they were not interested in, in having a private, private events of any sort anymore. So. I think part of the scaling thing is you know, it's less competitive and more of the hangout and play with your toys thing. Yeah. Um, part of the appeal. A little bit of scaling is that you're, it's not really a competition and it's like you're 14 hanging out with your buddies go like, hey, let's play with our RC cars in the park uh, and you're older. So you have a camper. Yeah. I mean, still a ton of that would still happen. Like people were out on trail for hours on end. Like they'd go out two, three, four hours on these trails, come back, take a break in the parking lot and then head back out again. It was just the difference at the end of the night. They drove 20 or 30 minutes to a hotel instead of staying where they were like just sitting there and being done for the day so um but i think kind of made people cram the fun in so to speak so they were real focused on getting stuff done and i I don't know it it was definitely different i don't know that was bad um but it wasn't as awesome as it used to be back in the day when it was at the campground that's for sure so yeah and they said you you lose some of the party atmosphere of what what (laughs) what a camping and like, I would say off-roading like glamorous style crap is it's you go do stuff and then it's a shit show at the fire pit. Right. Um, with a bunch of dudes. Was there an actual best 2020 or did they not have it because of COVID? Right. They had none. There was uh they did have Axial Fest 2020 in Indiana cause Indiana didn't care, but uh, California cared and they were uh, no, nothing in 2020. Oh, Pete got uh, mid-century modern. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Uh, Badlands was still red, even with all the rain. We went and, you know, between the rain showers, we went out and scaled, and it was cool. And then there was even several daytime sessions where there was no rain. So There's a song or two about that. Um, Let's talk about – what was the other thing we are going to talk about today? Man, really on track. I was so distracted by me turning the lights on behind me, I I forgot uh, what we set up here. What you forgot about? Was it the RC cars you forgot about? No. Oh, well, that is one of them. How many Axel Fests have you done, Drew? Almost all of them. Um, That's not a number. Ten? <laughs> How many? All. Eight, eight, eight or nine, I think. Me, and ten like, you... if, if there isn't one that's head and shoulders above the best, give me some like years where you're like, oh, yeah, these three years were especially great or anything. They're all the same. 2000 uh, and... <laughs> 14, I think, was the last year when I did it, was still working at Novak, I, I want to say, maybe ish. And only because of the group that we had go that year. We had like three campsites side by side. People pulled in and they thought we were the headquarters. Like they'd roll in and try mm-hmm. to check in at our tent. We're like, no, you got to go over here type of deal. That, that was the year that we had. As much as I can remember of that year, that, that was the year that we had the most well, fun. I'd been impressed that you can remember eight years ago. Well, 
The stories have been retold many times. That was the year of homepage. Legend has it. Was this a Facebook memory? Is that why you remember it now? (laughs) Because eight years ago on this day, you were there. It was long before uh, any sort of videos or anything like that. So. 2014. I think it's really crazy to me to hear years after 2000, and they're more than like three years ago. Like you know, right. like someone who's 21 today. I was born in 2000. Like what? People were born in 2000. Like what? That, that blows my mind. That's not a thing. They got. We got to talk about. Uh, I'm gonna put this over our faces, because uh, this was a Facebook topic that uh, received a little bit of uh, people arguing with each other. It was. Uh, this guy, I don't know who it is. Oh, Ty Tessman's championship winning hot bodies, a skill nitro buggy piece of RC history for three thousand dollars. Where, where did this? Tell me. This uh, my buddy sent it to me on offer up. It was local, uh, saying that I should buy it. Why would I spend <laughs> three grand on an old buggy? And it doesn't even really say it is the national championship one, and but it has a roar sticker on it. Uh, there was a big uh, hubbub on our. We got more people talking about it than I would have just thought. Because is it the whole car? Or was it just the body? That no, was the whole car. It's a car in a bag. Car in a bag. Dig in a box. Uh, it was uh, the whole car. It was taken down. I don't know if someone bought it. And uh, and I read a lot of the comments that were like, because I made the joke. I said, it "Must be tough times. If you're going to sell your, you know, your your memories." But. Uh, I, it wasn't Ty Tessman selling it. Um, if you won the Roar National Championship, would you keep your car or would you sell it for three grand uh, or give it to someone to sell the three grand? No, I, I'd be willing to bet that that's one of them cars that they raffled off because they do fundraisers with some of their winning cars every once in a while. And somebody might have won that in a raffle and has it up for sale. That'd be my guess. So you think it's a re- replica? It could be a body that's on a car, but I mean... Set, set aside the provenance of it being a Ty Tessman buggy. Mm. How much is a, is a pro eight scale buggy worth like like, today? A new one? Like if you built it and put all the stuff in it, like yeah, I'm gonna build one just like Ty Tessman set up, including whoever his motor guy is to port it. Like I'm gonna like by the time the thing hits the track, um, Three or if, four, assuming right. the guy who's racing it had to pay for everything, I know Ty Tessman doesn't pay for everything. Right. Like, what, you, what, what do you think that's worth? Well, I'm assuming it didn't have electronics in it. That was my assumption on that. Uh, but if you were like this is buggy an engine, I mean an engine's like five. Well, let's say it had electronics. I'm just curious. What five hundred bucks for an engine? Seven hundred bucks. No, what? To, for a race ready rig with this, all the things? You're what are you balling? You buying the most expensive radio on earth or something? I Tessman's car? Yeah, that's what he's I saying. Five hundred dollar radio, a five hundred dollar engine, and a five hundred dollar. There's fifteen hundred right there. I mean. So yeah, but how are you gonna get the four grand? You still got another, you still got another twenty five hundred bucks to burn. Uh, there's a thousand dollars in accessory items and optional screws. Well, right. I, I don't think it's gonna. I mean, we're coming for a hyperinflation all of a sudden. We're 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 at three thousand dollars for a ready to run a scale race car, right? I mean, come on. I, I mean, I think you get to get it to three grand, and I mean, if that was with Easy. tires, starter box, uh, everything, yeah. Even without the starter box, but yeah. Yeah, but I don't think you're getting all that with this. I, I didn't read the listing more than uh, whatever was on this front page. Well, good research. Uh, of course. You, know, you get a free Jesus fish, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, if, if I were as good as Ty Tessman, I don't think I would care about like a Nats winning car. Like A, a world's car to me would be important, but these guys win Nats like, all the time. Totally. I, I, hmm? I don't know. I, I would think, to be honest, with you, the manufacturer would keep it if because you know it's like, I it's, so you race for Ferrari and F one, and they <laughs> they win a race, and they're like, yeah, we don't want this car, go sell it on the streets. It, it's a promotional tool in that regard, but but if if I'm allowed to, if they're like, no, that that's your car, you keep it. I'd be like, yeah, I want to keep the, the one from the first Nats I ever won, maybe, and there might be some others that are sentimental for other reasons, but uh, I wouldn't be like, yeah, every Nats car, I put it on the shelf and it stays pristine. I think uh, a pro racer worth his salt who's been in the game for a decade, they're over a uh, Nats car being special, you know? I mean, I, I want to reach. I don't have any trophy. I probably have a trophy from something, uh, but nothing from in the past when I was actually racing and won stuff. I just still do have my F main trophy from the Tamiya race, which I'm very proud of. F main. F for fast. Hey, I ran mod. I didn't cheese out and run stock. So I'm okay with that. Um, 
And the I two ran. years that I ran it, I practiced the shit out of the year before and I got in the F main. And then the next year I did my normal, I showed up to the track drunk in the morning and still in the F main. So it was, uh, I, I learned I didn't have to waste any time practicing. I think when I, I ran, when I ran mod, I, I was in the F or whatever E, maybe the E main. I, I can't remember. Well, I'll try to one up me with your E main. <laughs> But I won that thing. Like I smoked the dudes who tried real hard. It was I think crazy. I got first place in F main. To be honest, or first or third. I don't know. I have to look. I it, was just... the, it was the second of the last main. That, that was because the, the last main only had three cars in it, and then our main had ten cars. In it. Oh no, mine was. Uh, this these races were packed. I think it went well below the F main. But yeah, back back when you used to race in the dinosaur days, there was a lot of yeah. still. with those round cells and shit. Yeah. Um, and brushed motor. Uh, let me I'll see what else I'll put a couple other pictures here to... I, I still have my uh, 19 turn read race of championship champion trophy because I'm keeping that thing forever it's up there oh, I was there when you won that, that's so cute um, my dad was so stoked I was going to upload something, what was it we do the forgotten RC cars thing because I want to see if anybody forgot the RC car that I forgot about. Well, I, yes, but I uploaded something and now I don't see it. So now I have to see what happened to my. So if you guys want to talk while instead of looking at me, I'm not looking at you. Nope. I'm looking at my background. <laughs> Where did it freaking save? I don't understand. Pete, Pete, is your R two D two back there? Uh, is that is that remote control? Can you make that thing go? No, he's just big. Um, you should RC that a, thing. He has a battery compartment, so there is a version of him that I think lights up or talks, mm -hmm. um, but they're not motorized or anything. You should motorize it. There, there's one that's about two thirds that size that is like super electronic. He's like three hundred bucks, and his head turns and he, he drives and he does all the sounds and stuff. You don't you don't want to make that thing RC? Who has time? I don't have time for stuff that you just put together in the normal way or just open a box and run. So <laughs> you know. I, I feel like some some servos in the arms of that thing and a couple like servos in the bottom for wheels yeah. and you'd be I in bet, business. I literally have stuff to put together that's like Legos. Like I have a Lego Ducati. I haven't even opened the box to like look at the parts. I mean, it's no time. Man, we did Legos the other day. It makes my hands hurt. I'm getting old. Like I'm getting like office hands. <laughs> uh, where I'm so. Excuse me. I'm sneezing. I'm allergic to this office hands talk. I have them both here. What am I? What am I doing here? What I, am I missing? I almost blew up my ground motor, Pete. Almost. His grandmother? My gr what? my my grom motor. <laughs> <laughs> it it didn't leave me stranded, but uh, it started making some horrible horrible sounds and uh, did an oil change, and there was lots of shininess in it. Took the head off, and there was like direct piston on sleeve contact. It was porno. Those little Honda motors usually just go forever. What happened? Twenty-seven thousand miles, and it's that's a lot for. Yeah, but how long have you had it? Since I got it, November of two thousand eighteen. So very little, just under three years. To one twenty-five, right? Yeah. Uh, but it has. A, it's got. It's not stock because it's got a. F some cheesy aftermarket cam in it that does God knows what, and, then and it beats the living piss out of it. A third party ECU reflash that changes the fueling and raises the rev limiter 500 RPM. So <laughs> smart. It, like <laughs> the it cruises five. along at the stock red line now because normally it's like 9,000, 9,200, and now it goes to like 10,200, something like that. Are those two valve or four valve? Two. All right, I'm ready. I got some, uh, oh, got some Phil, pictures. Phil completed. Back to RC. Wait, take it, take it away, Derek. I, I'm not going to go to this one yet because I do remember I have something sitting here for us to look at. And uh, uh, this was uh, something that came out. Is this going to work? Yeah. Oh, gigantic RC car. Yes. Ah. All right, hold on. I got to take. Uh, sorry, Brian. Take you off here. What, 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 what was my joke? This is the thing that no one asked for, but a bigger RC car. Bigger scaler. So Red Cat, which has come out with some cool looking stuff recently, uh, just released this, which when you have no scale, which it doesn't have, 
I can't tell you that it's bigger. It is a one eighth scale trail truck. It's huge. Which in the I first thought was very similar to the Wendigo. Wendigo. It is the Wendigo. The is Wendigo it? with a body that is scaled to fit over the wheels. It's, it's like it's like when to me it says this is twelfth scale because the full size thing is so big that the tenth scale car, based on wheelbase and what we call tenth scale, scales out to actually twelfth scale. Right. So there are the Wendigo is a bigger bigger uh, truck to begin with. I, I'm, I think you guys can see all the words I'm scrolling through here. Let me just double check since I'm not looking at it. Um, aside from it's just being a bigger a scale crawler, which I could have swore was a Wendigo, but it took me forever to find that. Uh, and look, it comes with the uh, little pieces of uh, Charlie in there. It's my people. Yeah, I started to question because I'm like, at first I thought it would be cool to have a larger one, but everywhere that I've run a scale truck, I think 10 scale is the right size. Uh, and I bring up uh, Corona Del Mar, which is a sort of a world famous. I was, about, uh, I, was about to say, I was about to say world famous. Which, uh, and I'm complicated with the clicks here. Uh, a world famous scalar spot, which is, is actually an amazing place, to be quite honest. If you're ever in Southern California, you go down to the beach and there's an outcrop that literally looks like it was a, a off roaders scalar created. And I don't think this will fit in all the places that I've run and tried the little, all these places that look like tires are worn into the, the rocks and everything. So, as Charlie said, it's a size that no one asked for, but I can see the appeal of it because it is a little bit bigger. And I guess maybe like the big uh, over 40 buggy that they just created, it's it maybe a little bit easier to crawl over something. You can put your GI Joes in there. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they look out of scale because I think it's too big for a GI Joe. But it's not that big, though. I mean, it's the size of an axial wraith, except the body is larger to I, cover more of the wheels. I was going to say, it looks no, the, like. The, the Wendigo, I should have brought it up here because I have one. The Wendigo is a bigger, I mean, compared to like. It's a, oh, so it's the size this of the thing, wheel. It's bigger than that. And the width of the axle and the wheelbase. It's a long wheelbase, wide truck with big wheels and tires on yeah. it that they made a scalar body to fit. So it's like a 2 2 rig that they made a scalar body for. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's bigger than most if you want to use axial, the TR, TRX4, right. uh, all that stuff. It is bigger than it. So when I said uh, G.I. Joe, I meant the old school ones, like Barbie doll size. So it's it's a centimeter wider than a Wraith, but it's the same wheelbase. Well, the wheelbase on this on the uh, Red Cat is adjustable from 355 to 379 and 367 is stock, whereas a Wraith, the wheelbase is 355. I don't but know what a Wraith is. What is, a, what, what is the TRX4? I mean, that's... you just know that information? Yeah, yeah he's got ventilators. We're online. I mean, come on. Oh. <laughs> I'm too busy holding my beer to look anything up. Yeah, a typical uh, ten scale trail truck, I think, is like a 312 millimeter wheelbase. Yeah, it's bigger. Sounds, sounds reasonable. Yeah, but, but I mean, this isn't like a new scale we've never seen for trail trucks. It's big. It's not. It's the size of a 2.2 inch uh, trail rig. You know, like a like a. If you uh, were to take a, a two two rig, yeah, yeah and there, put yeah. a body on it, armor, wraith, etc. But I'm sure, I'm sure it uh, the impressions of an even larger vehicle because that body is huge. Um, but in terms of actual footprint, it's not like you can't drive it places where other cars go. I mean, certainly it won't fit everywhere a one ten scale trail truck will go, but neither will a race. I mean, um, for well, right. But that, that was my whole point is that some of these places like seem to be perfectly fit for the size of the whatever. Th th think about it this way though: like a lot of the folks that are building these things or want these things, they have full size rigs where the rocks are enormous and they need a bigger RC car to go there. I think this might be to the to that crowd. Mm -hmm quite a bit or the dudes you have side by sides that bring their fish scales with them out to the desert and blast them around kind of same thing like you go to some of those huge rocks that where they do the full size stuff you yeah, kind of this thing ain't going over that shit either so i mean I, I, i'm okay I'm, that. yeah <laughs> i'm okay with it uh maybe they'll send us one and i'll do a review where he's okay with it. happy about it but yeah uh it, i, I would test it at the same places i'm just saying because otherwise if something gets too big, it becomes boring because then it's like, oh, it's sort of like going, you know, over little pebbles so with a big I, car or I whatever. The ladies too. Yeah. Well, that the whole category. I mean, definitely the trail truck size is most popular. The 1.9 inch size. 
Um, that's where all the action is. The 2.2 size is a lot uh, smaller. Uh, it's a bigger vehicle, but it's a smaller category. If people like them, great. If they don't buy them, well, there's plenty of other 10 scale stuff that they'll keep sticking with, I imagine. Yeah. And then uh, we're going to push this along because Charlie has to go ride his motorcycle, which I will respect. Respect. Right. And then, uh, so well, Pete, uh, Pete, Pete, happens. if you follow us on uh, Facebook or Instagram, I'm assuming Pete put these on Instagram. I did. I didn't check today, but uh, I do see the post. And he is doing a series of... Uh, RC cars you forgot existed. I had to think of the actual term, so I had to look yeah, at it. And the idea was to have some filler when there's no new stuff, but um, there has to which be would be every day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, let, let's start with the uh, first one. We only have two to talk about, but somebody can bring up other cars that we forgot. And I, I tried even, to. I didn't even recognize that thing. I did. I think they made a gas one too. I'm not 100 percent sure, but What's, no, what what is it? It's Lozy Six. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wasn't there a Mini Cooper version too? That was a uh, fifth scale, well, fifth oh. scale platform gas car. Oh. I'm not sure what that would scale out to, to a, compared to a real Mini Cooper, maybe half scale practically. But man, that I ne I forgot so much about that one. I don't know. And it's only, it's nothing even rings a bell on that. The it was a good looking body. That, I mean. that would be a great car you forgot about because that Mini Cooper was supposed to be, I think fuel injected when it first was like announced or had mm. there was something going on with the engine that was a breakthrough and they were like yeah no breakthrough right yeah here. it was probably this the stupid gas engine that i did the review i gotta tone it down a little bit some people are sensitive the a scale gas buggy that they came out that didn't work that's probably the engine that they wanted to put in it and then they decided that oh no it doesn't really work in rc cars so uh, that'd be very big for fifth scale or a very small engine for fifth scale uh some sort of four stroke for the torques wasn't it yeah. Well, yeah, that little one was smaller. Yeah, you're right. It was a tiny engine. Yeah, that was a whole debacle with them and HPI, but that can be a future installment of Cars You Forgot About. Oh, Cheers, is an HPI Cars We Forgot About. Um, speaking of, uh, speaking, oh, my humor is good. Uh, I think this is an HPI. Yep. The that, Cup Racer. I thought that thing was going to be awesome when it came out. When when you posted that, I was like, oh, cup racers were dope, but no one ever ran them. There's just the idea of scale looking cool cars. I was already a fan back then. That was like early 90s or early 2000s. Uh, 2009. I have the, oh, uh, nine, I had the Z one because I had the Z uh, that matched it. I should have got the cover of it, but um I, I guess I could pick an HBI because uh, they're really not relevant to me anymore. They always come up with shit that no, like why would you come? Why would you waste all this time and effort and come out with that? You, you remember that the uh, desert racer they had the yes, little scale was, four wheel the, drive desert racer thing? Yes. I thought that thing was uh, whatever. How lame! Nobody wanted anything that they had. They were cool though. Like there's the whole the, mini, the mini line trophy, and all that. that they were cool. The mini trophy is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, they came out with the smaller version when everybody was coming out with the bigger versions. Well, not only was it smaller, it was independent suspension, like um, which is fine. The slash was independent suspension, but like they they made a model of the like only uh, not short course truck. It was a desert truck. I I thought it had a solid desert truck out there with independent suspension. They made an accurate model of which it was like a like a brain twister. Like there's a full size desert truck that's independent suspension. Yes, and that's what this is a model of, and it's smaller than a slash. Like. It was just a weird. Mix. It really competed with the uh, Tamiya, uh, whatever version that they had at the time. You know what I'm talking about? The uh, was the smaller. Blitz. I think the Mini Trophy was their first anything that looked like a slash. I might be it, it was their car when they came out when Short Course was becoming popular. That was totally out of the market and just the wrong timing. If it had come out before there was any other Short Course craze starting. You'd be like, okay, well, they didn't get it. But this was like, oh, we're not going to work on a real short course. We're going to work on this smaller scale one, which it was pretty looking. It was a cool looking car. Yeah. Just it, when it's the wrong size, it's just not appealing. It, and it wasn't the right size. It doesn't handle, it doesn't, can't go on any of the tracks. And, and it was a failure. Somewhat like their cup racer, which looked amazing, like that Z body. I think I still have it somewhere. Uh, 
was beautiful, it was perfectly scaled, uh, but the car was a turd. Turd. Didn't go. There's no. There's no track, and there's no. Didn't really handle well. So you like. You know, and the, the concept was everyone would have the same turd, which makes it fun, um, but didn't really happen. Um, I don't know if playing with turds is super fun, even if everybody's doing it. I mean, you sort of want something that's not agony, uh, and their their cars were a little rough. If, if everybody's in the same agony, it's a shared joy. Thankfully, you know, you can have a turd, but there's toilets without turds in it. <laughs> and so... Uh, you have to look at it from the turd side out. Whoa. Oh. Uh, Here's my thing. You're HPI. Like, you're, you're investing a ton of money to tool up this new car, which does not fit in any existing category, which is fine because Lord knows Traxxas does great with not caring about categories. But um, to have it be on road, which, like, okay, let's just instantly cut the audience, like, down by two-thirds. Like, it's going to be on road. And on top of that, it's not going to be large, which is always more impressive than small. And the whole idea is that like people are going to race them. We're going to build it as something you go racing with. You know, it's low key and casual. Still, you know, it's not like fun play first. Um, and then you don't really have infrastructure when the thing launches to be like the car is out. Like you know, we have set up races for these at you know every major track in each state that's ready to go. Um, so there's going to be a Cup Series. We've sent ten cars to each one of these tracks. Um, so you can try one. Like they didn't do any of that. It was just like, here it is. You guys love this, right? And I think that happens a lot with these kind of new, certainly for the Viterra models. Like Viterra's had some awesome cars, great looking vehicles and poof, they're gone. Because if they aren't a runaway hit in the first like three months, it seems like screw and it, cancel, we blew it. Tra you know? Traxxas comes out with a Fortec that has some sort of fantasy Ferrari body on it. And every club track in the nation has a Fortec spec class all of a sudden. They do great. Yeah, like on road racing made this comeback of spec Fortec races. Like it started to become like the new VTA class type of deal. When was not that? every not right any, meow? Yeah. Meow? Yeah. Yeah. Right meow. Right meow. Oh, I don't know that. Yeah. But I mean, I think if Horizon is stuck by the 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 uh remember the Glamis Uno buggy, it was like big but not too big, and it was two-wheel drive. That thing was cool, I thought. That probably could have found some legs. And it's not like like you, you got all the tooling done. It doesn't cost a lot to pump out some parts. Well, I mean, what like, was, uh, why, why discontinue it? Why not just keep it for sale? If people buy it, great. But you don't have to shut it down. You know, just shut it down. Well, that, lots of bad decisions. I never understand a lot of companies. So, like, you know, not to pick on HBI, but they went through a phase. Uh, and I think, to me, this was the downfall of them. And I've seen a couple companies follow this. Only one that hasn't really followed that path is Traxxas and they don't give up on the RC brand is that some of these bigger brands gave up on the core of RC and said, we're not going to market to RC people anymore. We're only going to go to full scale events and we're diving in and spending all our money. And basically you just advertise for RC. And when the person went to the hobby shop, because they didn't support anything there anymore, the people were like, don't buy that shit, buy this one. And I think, I think HPI fell down the rabbit hole of listening yeah. to people uh, saying we need to focus on outside of RC, not our core, not the people that were there, not the, Hey, make sure they have parts when your car comes out. And, and, and they just got led to the wrong end of the stick. Like I said, like someone convinced them, Hey, well, let's not work on a 10 scale version. I mean, that truck in a 10 scale form would have been uh, at least scale and 10 scale, which was, it just wasn't big enough. You know, yeah, HBI really did go kind of licensing mad, you know, for a while there, you know, where everything was connected to a, a, a full size, you know, brand or manufacturer. Like, we've got a connection with Yokohama and we were, we're hot import nights. And yeah. everything well, Yokomo is the first brand that I feel went down the, the, the and they told me this, and that's why I, I can say this. Uh, they decided when they hired some marketing dude that they were only going to go to drift events and do no marketing and RC coverage. And it wasn't worth sending me their car. For whatever, let's say it's eight hundred eight dollars cost for ten pages of free advertising in the market, one hundred percent to their demographic, RC cars. They were much. They were saying, "No, we're not going to spend any money in the RC market," and they disappeared. You could say they're still here, but I mean, great. No, no. I mean, if you go to a hobby shop, they're not going to buy a Yokomo unless I don't even think OCRC. You know, they go through the phase of everybody wants a Yokomo because it was new. I don't think if you go there, they're selling Yokomos anymore. 
I honestly don't know how any of the brands survive that don't do anything that isn't like more of a, you know, I don't want to say mass market because even the most mass market RC is still pretty niche. But like Mugen, they don't do anything that's a car you play with, you know. Um, ditto for X Ray because I think X Ray I think has some government subsidy money, you know, being in Slovakia. No, Mugen's a race. They, they focus on the brand and they can somehow. I mean, I I don't know what profit is on shit. Well, I mean, and, and Mugen doesn't offer a whole fleet of different models. I mean, they, they've got it like four or five race cars and that's it, right? Yeah. I got to confess, I haven't looked at Mugen's in forever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, you could probably argue that if they did ready to runs and stuff that they would be bigger, but they, they apparently are happy with, with the size of their wing. The, the safe bet. Uh, and they've stepped down. I mean, they came out with a gas truck that I don't think really was a giant success. They come out with a 10 scale electric, which to me was way out of left field for me. I thought uh, so too. Touring car, mm, what? Yeah, <laughs> the, the, their 10 scale electric truck. I remember that when that came out. That it was like a Lozy clone, wasn't it? it? Was nitro, yeah. Well, that was going to be the two wheel drive bug truck or what stadium truck was about to make a comeback when that all MT10, happened. yeah. I think it was called an MT10. Uh, so I mean, I, I sort of get it. Um, Horizon, I you know, they're uh, I don't. Maybe they just don't invest in whatever a car that is. Maybe we think that they invested in it and they just bought a thousand from a swap me and said this is our car. But you know what I mean? Like Trax is the only one that really has kept models on in forever. I has Trax is discontinued a model. I mean, aside from the really early stuff, but from the yeah, Rus from the when they became popular, like Rustler phase, and that was what the nineties, right? It's 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 a big deal for a person to be able to bring their old ass Traxxas into the hobby shop and still be able to get parts for it today. Like that, yeah, that's a huge sell. Like well, they haven't changed the damn thing. There are very few platforms that Traxxas has come out with that have since gone away. Uh, right. Very few, like obviously the original Cat they don't do, uh, but even the Cat kept going as the Spirit, a super economy on road truck. Uh, it, that went away. They had it, one that was the. Uh, it was street something. It was a super, super simple two-wheel drive street car. Um, that one didn't last a long time. But but yeah, yeah. but Trax has never come out with something that said we're, we're making a big splash. Here's our new thing, and then like a year later or you know six months later, it's gone. And just but that is I don't, I can't think of any time that's ever happened. I mean, the original funny car wasn't a giant splash. Um, they, they don't still sell that, right? They don't, but they sold it for a long time. It was available. You you could get them. You know, they were there. Um, that I'd say I think, I think once they sold them out of them, they didn't reorder them or get more of them, but they didn't, you know, say, look, well, it's not knocking the doors down. We're going to shut it down. No, no more of these things. Like, I, I think like, yeah, we've made a commitment. We're going to support it and uh, make sure we give it every chance to be successful and all that jazz. That was one of their few that actually didn't have like a 10 year lifespan type of deal. And it's yeah. still went like five or pretty, six years. Pretty much anything you can think of that Traxxas has discontinued, it just got old. I mean, they're not going to do that. Right. That big nitro one six kill. Uh, I think it was called. It was the big buggy. I think it was called. Yeah, they don't sell. I see. I thought they still sold everything. I mean, they sell a sledgehammer, right? Or no? <laughs> no. The sledgehammer is now a tire. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, the, the rad two and sledgehammer platform that's not available anymore. But again, that thing had a long I, life, and then I, they came out with. There was plenty of overlap between those cars and when the uh, Bandit Stampede Rustler triplets came out. Where you weren't just left high and dry. Like there were plenty of people running sledgehammers and rad twos, and then there were no parts and they got boned. Like, no, they those cars got phased out as they got, you know, broken, sold, put away, people got out of RC. New people were buying Russell's bandits. I don't think anyone was like, This I have a rad two, I can't run it. I don't think that happened for like anybody, you know. There there were certain phases where like the new one was so much better, you were like, All right, sweet, I don't get to fix this anymore. I'm just gonna get a new one. But like yeah. for this thing broke all the time. Time for a new one. Yeah, I, I, Brian, uh, I'll address your comment. I don't think the Trax is Funny car was early for, for a drag race phase because if we're being honest, the car doesn't really work. It's too narrow and too hard to drive. Yeah. You can't um, play with it. That's the problem. Right. But, I mean, uh, it's too I, purpose built. It's like a, having an oval car. Like, great. Right. You don't go out on the street and go straight. Right. Or, right. Um, but it's a, still a very cool looking car. And, and I mean, the, they didn't invent the concept of drag cars because if you've been into RC, you really know that drag racing has really been a very underground popular thing since I worked at a hobby shop and that's the mid nineties. 
Um, you just didn't have purpose built drags, drags, but you were drag racing everybody. I mean, for a while, I was just feeding the inner city guys uh, the <laughs> fastest motor, and they're like, "Derek, make my car go faster." That's it. So you know, they're racing for money forever. I mean, drag racing is very American, I guess. For as long as I've been doing tech support, people will call me up and say, "We're we're racing each other. We're just doing straight line speed run stuff." And they have questions about how to make it go fast in a straight line. So. Yeah. For and the net front of cover is just too narrow. It's, it's, uh, that, did it have stability management at the time? Yeah, uh, it, it had all sorts of goofy tuning that you could do. So yeah, but I don't know if it had stability management. It's very, yeah. I mean, it's like a real dragster. Uh, you know, you think it's you're just going to go in a dragster and push the button and go forward. Uh, it required a lot of and way more skill than I think most people had. Yes. All right. There was, well, and then it, you could tune a lot of stuff on that goofy thing, like so. Not on the car. They had shock positions, oils. They had that all that adjustability in the speed control stuff. They had like some no, sort of launch stuff. stuff. And I, yeah. Yeah, well, if the funny car had come out with like a stretched bandit under it at the time, I think we'd be talking about how drag racing blew up when the Traxxas drag car came out. Um, but I think it was just it was a, a super ambitious car. It was a total simulation of drag racing. You yeah. could stage it. You did a burnout. You had the three position switch. Um, I mean, it was a real you know. Uh, nitty gritty we're gonna do drag racing and, and capture it in scale awesome but just like a funny car super hard to drive you can't just jump into a funny car and make it pass same thing with the traxxas one it was just so real that it was too scale like yeah, you can just horse around with it you know right you can't just horse around the funny car either you don't you don't see john force hot lap in the parking lot for fun before they pack up for the day you know you uh yeah but that's but the market for and, and again i i i understood the idea because they were going to the drag strip at this point yeah uh they're trying to sell an advanced skill model to the ready to run crowd of dragster people, oh, which yeah, in theory, I yeah. would, I, it's still a beautiful car. You could put it on your shelf and it's a great looking model the thing flips up and it'll still go forward. Um, but to the demographic, it was a, uh, if they ran that once they're like, Oh, I don't know. This is over or it was broken. Did you ever uh, play with the, the drag strip lights that came out at the same time and try to use that? The DTS one. Yeah. DTS one was awesome. I mean, that. Uh, I have it. I, I actually want to get it uh, functioning and working because I still want to do drag, uh, dirt drags. Yeah. Because you can use it for all sorts of stuff. It's super cool because, mm -hmm. um, like, one, yeah, it, it drops the lights and you can do a pro tree. And, oh, that's cool. But when you're running the app and it, and it gives you your ET and your reaction time and, you can yeah. run you can run bracket racing which is huge mm -hmm. we talked about bracket racing plenty of times where like for me that's key because i'm not interested in having the fastest car like like you know bar none heads up racing because i'll just never build that car i have no interest in getting a one-turn motor all that stuff zero you know but bracket racing where it's like yeah i have to put in my best run for me and if i do a better run for me than you do run for you then i win it's not about just reaching the line first I mean, that's way more interesting to me it's it's very much why bracket racing is such a popular thing in the real world i mean people yeah. spend tons of money on bracket race rigs so yeah i mean bracket racing you can run you can race your grom against a hayabusa right and that would be fair and like i would want to watch that race it'd be hilarious to watch you take off and get like nine tenths the way down the track and this guy goes off it's great we should and set that, that up yeah <laughs> And with the app, you can run the app. As I remember, you can run like a full tournament. You you can put your mm -hmm. you put the guys in there. It will it will run the brat the trees, and it just does it all for you, which is just crazy. Um, See, now I really want to get this thing back to my old garage. Yeah. Forget it. It's it's a little tricky depending on where you're setting it up to get the the beams aligned. Right. But once you're once you align them, they stay put, provided you don't hit one of the reflectors with your with a car or something. But bring like an extra piece of cardboard to make an extra shelf to go above it to so that there's the, if there's any like low sun or whatever, it, it's not happening. Yeah, my garage door won't close because of that. Right. Same. I understand that one. Same. Yeah. <laughs> the, the the sensors from my garage door are six inches from each other and they're on top of the garage door opener yeah, because they stop working. Too. So so Toddler, don't run into my garage because it will You're be crap. Yeah, yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street, I think, or somebody got crushed in one of those movies from a garage door. Um, any other cars that anybody wants to throw in? Of, uh, I don't understand this comment. Traxxas is in danger of becoming the Morgan Roadster while the AAB6 develops like a 911. So I mean, Morgan, it's just because it's still old technology. Morgan this, never changed, and they just. Were wood well, uh, that, that would be that if Traxxas only had one car and it was made of wood, but uh, and that Traxxas cared about you know building cars to race against the V6, which they don't. 
I don't care what Traxxas does, so long as they keep making making X Maxes, bro. Jesus Christ, I love that thing. Somebody yeah, was yeah. over the other day. Yeah. Look For at my me, X Max. Like, if you look at race cars, it's still an A arm and a camber link. The motor has moved, all that kind of stuff. Like race car development, it's like every year they find an even finer stone to sharpen the knife on, and they get just a little bit more honed and you know, dull the senses. Like, moves two millimeters, so that kind of stuff. It's well, like, I, and I'll argue at this point, I don't even think. Uh, we're changing things for performance anymore because I'm going to come back to this thing that uh, we did the review of man. That's a nice picture. Isn't it fun? Yeah. Uh, I built this and with the intent of racing at Joe's track, which uh, is called the farm and it's very sandy. And what I would thought was more of the old school dirt, except sand is much slipperier because it's sand than a little bit of hard pack. And they don't make <laughs> I don't really make tires anymore to work on this shit. Mm. Uh, and it was much harder than I thought. And now when it when it was wet, it got easier. But the amount of adjustability on this car is stupid. And none of it helped you. You needed tires. Uh, I, I, to honestly, I just built it because there is no help in the instructions to how to set it up to an old school track. Right. You know, you I have this. Zero traction. Put the camera uh, links all the way yes. up. Yes. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh I did build it with the less traction transmission uh, laid back, which uh, was by coincidence. Because um, you broke the piece? I did notice that because uh, they've been moving tr uh, weight to the middle and back to, for carpet and off-road is getting super high traction. So somehow mid motor works better, but it was very, I, out of the box from their setup, how it was and the bat my batteries pushed back. I felt like I was probably driving how a 911 drives is that it's great until the point of pendulum and then the back end is uncontrollable and it starts going like this. It, it narrows the window of good. And then when you get past it, it's all gone. Right. Like, I mean, that, well, that was the old school 911 before electronics is it was all the weights in the back. And when you spun out the fucking asset, you just went right to F bomb. The ass end uh, would flip around, you'd die. Uh, I really felt that with this car, and uh, I'm curious because I'm going to see if they can give me setup changes to fix that. When was the last time you felt that a new platform was significantly better than the old platform? Because I remember, like, when you went from the Pro SE to the Double X, huge difference. When you went from Double X to Triple X, pretty big difference. Uh, same thing with uh, the, the analogous you know, Team Associated cars. When you went from B3 to the B4, that was a big difference. Of course, when they went to the, you know, uh, like, followed suit with the uh, b5 and the more update platform that was a big difference but and i can't say I, i've been racing anything since then so i have no idea but are the cars like is a b6 a lot better than the b5 and is the latest lows a lot better than the previous one the latest for, x-ray a lot for, than the previous one for today's tracks they probably are yeah i was gonna say i think the biggest change has been what we've been racing on no, 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 was... no, I, of course i know it's better with the tracks but like do you think that the Team Associated Top Line race car that you can buy right now is better than the one that came out right before it? Like, way better. Like, this is night and day. Man, they really fixed this thing. Jeff did an article on the old one and the new one of... I'd say no. Uh, Jeff did an article... that's Jeff not a one... against Team Associated. I mean, it's racing. If you can get no. a 10% better difference, you go for it. I'm not knocking them saying it's, if it's not twice as good, don't do it. I'm just curious. How Jeff, Jeff, did, Jeff did an article with uh, extensive testing on... And I'm trying to figure out what car it was. Is either the associated or the, the low C where it was the generation before and after. He did it on carpet for consistency because off-road is very difficult to right. try to analyze your lap time when it's never the track is never the same. Um, and he said, and, and I forget which it was. I, it was either B5 to B6. I think that's what it was. or Yeah, it had to be. Um, and he had it set up for carpet. And he had a, a pretty significant change in, in lap time. Not like not night and day, you know, where it's like a second. But if you're talking a tenth or, or two tenths a lap, it's a huge amount in, in racing. Um, but he did notice a change. And again, it's on carpet because that's really the fairest uh, generation. And, you know, it's not really that inconsistent. It's pretty consistent. So he did note with a lot of battery packs and then the typical Jeff, uh, I'm going to over test things he did know a difference in testing and he thinks he's a good driver except you can't drive a car that pushes he thinks he's a good driver yeah 
Except, to, except if the car pushes, he just drives straight into the end of the straightaway. I've seen it happen. No anticipation. Yeah, exactly. Hey, I'm just going to turn this car uh, where at the end of the straight and think it's going to turn uh, on a dime. No warm up either. Jeff just went on Tosselini's race car straight down the straightaway into the end of the. That's uh, right. It pushes a little bit. Yeah, that's probably why you don't go full throttle to the end of the straight. It's a thought. Uh, Brian mentioned that Ray, rules maybe may. Be, well, uh, rules may be to blame for advancement or lack thereof in race cars. I don't think so. I think in racing, there's lots of dimensional rules and how big the wheels can be and stuff. But I don't think there's anything saying you have to have a arms. It can't be trailing link. You know, you, you can't have a rising rate suspension. It has to be standard. You know, the constant rate. I think there's very little rules about what the car can do technology wise, as long as it fits in a certain size box. Is that for anyone who looked at the last roar manual, roar rule book? I mean, right, or, or rule book. It dictates uh, like four wheel drive train car has to have four wheel drive like that's yeah and it has and to and be you can't have electronic assistance and stuff but as far as yeah. the mechanical parts of the car I think it's pretty much wide open um, you can do whatever you want yeah I I, don't, I mean the, the the rules limiting racing are just uh, motor tires rim size uh, none of those that I mean they're adapting the cars to current conditions and the tracks have definitely changed over the years. I mean, now we have tracks with full misters. We have, uh, you know, they've been adding cement traction stuff and lime and cow shit and weird stuff to tracks. It just traction's gone up and the cars have always changed. Well, I mean, the, the rules are flexible enough to absorb the Predator uh, uh, Pro Tem, what's it called? The, the car it was the, with the lay down shocks front and rear. Mm -hmm. We all went crazy for it in like 19, you know, 96 or something. Carbon tub, the Predator. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, that's only because I think Kinball did well with it. Well, I, you, I I wouldn't care if he got dead last. It just looked wild. I mean, you look at yeah. it like, yeah, that's not like any other RC car. So certainly there's room to do crazy stuff. And I don't think anyone's ever tried putting like a pro link style suspend, uh, you know, linkage on each corner. Um, I've seen in board stocks, of course. But uh, I think it's just a matter of risk. Like, it's like, you know what? No one else is doing it. The cars that win are simple. Simple is lighter. Simple is less play, less stuff to go wrong. Um I just think there's much incentive if you're a race car company to try something wild and new. Um, it's just about moving that weight around and uh, just optimizing and further honing. But I, think I, I would think they try wild and new, but it doesn't work. No, <laughs> I, mean, I, I, think, you know, I think RC got the, all that out of its system in the 80s and 90s. Just like in mountain biking, when suspension first came along, they were just bananas designs all over right. the place. That never should have been attempted from anyone who understood how, understood how suspension works. Well, Skinny designed the first one. That's yeah. why. <laughs> they got they got that out of the system Sorry, and the industry, and now suspension bikes very well sorted. Some work better than others, but there's no crazy designs anymore. You know, they're all pretty much homogenized. Because the, the there are things that work and things that don't. The, the turds have all been polished to a very high sheen, and if they yeah. try any harder, they're going to smear the hell out of them. So. No corn in those turds. But... Uh, Stretch here says that Rivkin uh, was on his channel saying uh, there's only a tenth is a giant difference in lap times. I mean, what's a what's a typical tenth scale electric track? Maybe, lap maybe he means tenths over the course of a whole run. I, I don't. But, but even then, I mean, when you a, a tenth is faster and better and worth it for sure. But I don't think you would drive the car that's a tenth faster. Be like, this is way better. But I remember back in the day when you went from the Pro SE to the Double X, like this yeah. is way better. You can instantly feel this car is easier to drive, and therefore faster. For like for me, like if a let's say you've got two cars, like, you know, it turns out it's not actually a lot faster, but it's it is easier to drive. Like that fast lap is way easier to get. That to me is 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 a giant achievement as opposed to yeah, but the lap time didn't go way down. Yeah, but it's way easier. You get that fast lap time way more often. I, I feel like there's more situations where you talk to a driver, he comes off the stand, he'll say he doesn't like something about the car. You look up to him and say, but the lap time was this. I'm like, oh, all right. I like it now. Like until they know the lap times, they're not really sure if they like or dislike a handling characteristics. This was, I mean, I helped some dudes set cars down and flip switches and look at cars. And like that immediate perception was always kind of. A lot different until they found out lap time. So when I used to race, every I worked at the hobby shop and I uh, had five different bodies painted for my car. I would literally say that this body was faster, only because it made less noise. But if something in your mind makes you go faster, it's still a uh, placebo effect's real when it works. People used to freak out about the antenna tubes and the color of their antennas and wheel nuts. And I used to have lucky body clips for that matter that made me faster. So. 
Yeah, and then you still got to survive a race and not crash. I mean, that's the biggest thing is that, yes, it's the average person might not be faster, but it's really not, you know, back to this B6.3, the average person is not buying that car. That's not an average person car. It's not like when I was a kid that I dreamt of an RC10 because that's what was available and that's what you read about. This is now like to, to be into a B6.3D, you are not walking into the internet and Googling RC car because that ain't popping up. I think when that happens, people go actually to the let's, hobby do it, shop. let's do it. Let's do a test right now. Everybody, Google RC car and tell me what the first thing that pops up is. Because I I do talk to customers occasionally, and they're like, "Hey, I just got this and this." Because I went to the hobby shop and I wanted to get, you know, I used to do RC cars back in the day. I wanted to get the modern stuff. This is what they sold me, and they end up with like a modern day race car instead of, you know, what they should have got, like a slash or something. What are we googling? RC car. Yeah, you're going to get, well, I got Horizon Hobby, RC Planet, um, and then Top 16 Remote Control Cars and Trucks, which is a Google heading, not the name of an article they found. And they've got Traxxas X-Max, Traxxas Rustler 4x4, Traxxas X01, and then an arrow to continue. I scrolled down to Jake's Performance Hobbies because my location services are on, and they're uh -huh. my local hobby shop. Jake's Performance Hobbies in Roner Park, California. Then I got the uh, Traxxas homepage, then a bunch of YouTube videos, which includes RC Edition Dude Perfect. Project World's Fastest RC Car, which is a Kelvin Ta Kevin Talbot thing. More Dude Perfect stuff. Uh, an A-Main video for the top 10 ready-to-runs. Uh, so, no, there's no RC10 in there. And I'm not knocking that as it, but it's not yeah. a beginner car. I get an ad for uh, Amazon uh, Cheap Cars, mm -hmm. Low C, Nitro RCX, FID Racing, Fifth Scale, MST, another garbage thing. And then uh, real websites, uh, Traxxas, Horizon, Traxxas and uh, cheap Amazon and Target, which must be an ad. So we have to remember that, that the demographic has now changed of, you know, like when I was a kid and RC10 was my dream from the, you know, Ultima or Grasshopper. The market isn't driven by what's in a magazine. It's driven by what somebody stumbles upon. I mean, the perception uh, back then was the race cars were the better ones or faster, stronger, all that. Nowadays, the race cars are the m more complicated ones, and you need a racetrack to race them versus a bash. That and they're less visually appealing. I mean, yeah, no one is going to choose the latest race car over a TRX4, an Arma. Um, Imagine if you showed them a truck. You know, it's like a, a Mustang from space, the super fast one. Yeah, I mean, you know what? Uh, some in the scale things. A truggy, even with the stupid new older man buggy body, is still really cool looking. It doesn't look like anything. No, no, but... I'm talking about you know like a, a two wheel drive competition buggy, that that kind of stuff. And I'm not saying it has to be scale, but certainly the uh, like to your point, the kind of science fictiony giant tire looks like a really aggressive gnarly machine. That stuff is much more visually appealing than typically the race stuff. Truggy is pretty much only for me. That's a race car that does have that kind of impact as well. Um, even like a competition touring car, you know, a, a bar of soap body compared to a scale looking um uh to me, car, yeah because like to me it looks great corvette or you know a, a tamiya car nicely finished and decal that's way more uh, interesting looking than a racing touring car to, i would 100 uh, percent agree except yeah. they could that, still look cool depending on the paint job you could paint a bar of soap to look better than uh right. than but, but that stuff different. isn't even on the shelf to be seen that stuff is on a count is behind the counter on a shelf and I was at my hobby town and they've got, um, I can't remember what race car was. It was the latest race car and the box didn't have a picture of it on it. It was just, um, right. sorry, I think it was team associate, but it was just like B6.8 and, you know, a logo and a name. And there was not a picture of the car. Um, Most of the manufacturers went through that phase, to be honest with you. Like, I think Mugen had no pictures. Uh, Associated went away from pictures. X-ray didn't went away from pictures. Cell and, phone companies did it because they stopped putting pictures of their phones on the It box. was just Apple logo. Yeah. RC car companies. Which is like, oh, fine when your customer base is anticipating that new car coming out. They can't wait to get it. They're ha they'll see it on the shelf stacked up like books and they want to grab and get one. But for Joe walking like, like oh, yeah. it's an RC. And like, you know, they're blown away when they see a scale looking axial, a giant low Z fit scale thing. You know, um, that stuff blows their mind. Um, if you had race cars out there, I think they would not be looking at those um, over those larger, more scale or more wild, you know, looking things. They look fragile and dainty compared to your your modern yeah. day manufacturer. I I think the markets change a lot. Is like I said, is now that you there's a 
if you're into racing, you're probably only looking at RC racing things. You probably are don't care if the, what the box has on it, to be honest with you. But, but even back in the mid-80s, if we had the cars we have today back then, I don't think people are like, no, 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 I want the RC tensile. I'd be like, no, I want this even bigger thing. Look how wild that looks, you know. Um, I don't think it's like that stuff wouldn't have worked back then. It just didn't exist. And back then, there was so much more overlap between what you could play with and what you could race. You could play with an RC10 because it was still a two-wheel drive buggy, just like, a, to me, a two-wheel drive buggy, but, but better. I mean, but it wasn't. You know, and even when you went racing, you raced on what looked like your backyard in the mid '80s. You know, makes me every time we talk about that, I, I feel like the Punky Brewster episode where they raced the RC cars in the backyard. <laughs> I don't remember that one. I remember like the for sure. But... One kid did a huge wheelie in his wild wheelie, and Lane's like, "Oh, that's a great wheelie, wheelie, Mike, but that doesn't make, get you around the track faster." And he did. Yeah. I bought so many Punky Brewster DVDs in the hopes that we would get that episode on DVD when my kid was born, but we never did. But it's on the YouTube, so just look at it up. Punky Brewster RC Cars. It's great. It's, it's something a, you'll never hear said ever again in anybody's life that's ever watched this in the future. I bought so many Punky Brewster quality. DVDs. Yeah. <laughs> that was an impressive purchase. Oh, God. Uh, I don't, see, we branched off into something that Brian doesn't... said that somebody needs to do something about body clips, and Traxxas did. They came up with this clip system for the scalers and for their go fast rigs. They have that like the hood clips in, it's got the flapper in the back. My X Max has it, it's pretty awesome. Like, I Eric's like it. got it behind him. Yeah, well, this one's better than yeah, the other one. The scaler one's even more awesome. But I, I want to be honest with you there's if you like to change bodies, uh, you still can't beat the stupid body clips. I'm sorry, right? Uh, the big thing is just having the stupid rubber thing to never lose it that's stuck to the body. That's the easy one because Proline had party hats, uh, which I didn't like because when you lose a party hat, there's nothing holding that thing on. Those are dumb. And they were big party hats. Right. Uh, cool. Oval bodies used to just have the screw through the top, which was very clean looking. Hated that. Yeah, but you got to be super exact on your body mount. Ruined so many bodies. Mounting Tra them <laughs> Tra that Traxxas is, has had at least three clipless methods i think is it three or two the x max they've got the latch system and right. they've yeah. got the one that's on the trx4 behind you which is a little latch for each uh, yeah and then two, two. two but, it, but it makes changing your body way harder because right. if you're going to try to put a different body on this this thing uh it ain't it's, it's going to be harder than screwing two four body posts I'll tell right. you that well it won't be if you're buying a body that's designed to accept the mounting system which Proline does for the, the latch style ones. And if you look at that TRX4 behind you, the way the the, the mount uh, attaches to other hard points that are inside the body. So Proline could easily say, okay, we've got these dimensions. We can build a body around these dimensions. I, Maybe you put a spacer, you know, to get the hood up or something, but like it will bolt in, line up with the fenders and drop into place. I mean, it's not like you can't do that. Pro, but to Pro your Line, point, yes, if you buy a Proline body right now that is generic fit for 1.9 crawlers, yes, it'll be difficult to put onto the TRX4 behind you, but you can still put regular body posts on it. You don't have to run the latch system. Pete's right. This one's easier than the other ones. I was uh, pleasantly surprised. I thought it was four. Now I'm going to sit there for like five minutes trying to get it lined up, but uh, it worked easier. It slaps so right this is the best one, but again, uh, to put this on another car was going to be, uh, while it, technically, yes, they can design it. It's just more complicated than for at least lining up four posts and at least having a hole that was close, but it looks super clean. And uh, this one worked. This one was the best one, even though I knocked it first because I was like, I like to talk before I do something and then figure out that it wasn't as hard. In right. Instant hate. Well, especially for scale cars, it just sucks to have that stovepipe coming out, you know. And by the way, you can cut those if they're 20 feet tall. You can yes. cut them. Nobody did that when they were a kid. I didn't cut that. I didn't even have wire cutters. That's not how you're supposed to cut those things. Yeah. What happens if you want to get a different body that needs them higher later? Cheap. Yeah. And then you get about a nine dollar uh, tree right. of plastic to get the ones. I remember at, uh, for a at car action, you have like a reader's ride. Like, wow, this car is amazing. It's super well detailed. Every decal is in place, perfect. And then like the body was like, Beep! like a good four inches. You know, like. Well, the good thing is you've never heard that body when you're flipped over. Right, there's a saver. Yeah, body saver. And there's been lots of designs of body savers from uh, plastic strips and stuff like that. Um, I get trimming the body post one extra hole high so you can move it a little bit, but please, one hole extra is enough. 
Not even that. They should just have that adjustment on the bottom and everything would be self. Because then, then if you just had a thing where you can move it up from the bottom up. Uh, I'm going to cut this off because uh, Charlie's going to go on a motorcycle ride. We've uh, wasted everybody's time for an hour. I'm sorry. One hour has elapsed already. Sorry that you guys have to listen to this for an hour and chose that on purpose, unless you're in prison and have to do some sort of community service. This would be so much good punishment. Uh, there's a chance we'll be here next week. There's a chance we won't. You never know. If you're betting, man. See you in a couple weeks. But uh, uh, we do have a magazine. I keep moving my mouse around like you guys can see it. But uh, you can subscribe. I'm doing that too. You can buy a hat. Uh, I only have like 20 hat left, so don't Ooh. not everybody go crazy. They're becoming and, uh, And uh, subscribe to the, to the channel. Hit the bell and whatever that crap is. That every yeah, see, Everybody has to say every time. Just hit it and like it. Put a thumbs up. Watch the other videos. You want your notifications on so you can tell when we're here. Send me the covers so I can make my little commercial for the man. I already, Pete, I already sent you the email with the download link. Did you? Yes. When did I get that? Uh, I'll resend it to you today, and I'll tell you when I sent it after this uh, sign-off here. So uh, thank you, Zach, for subscribing last week. I think I saw your email. If that was you, somebody did send me a long email that was back into – uh, the hobby after 20 years and couldn't find Welcome a magazine. Back. And uh, we're going to do this little thing right here. Where is it? Bye. Bye. Push in broadcast. See ya. Lights are going to go off.